A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from shale, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After spending two days in Samaria, Jesus went from that place to Galilee. For Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they too had gone to the festival. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover, and they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, The fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord.
Well, we're reminded in both our first reading and our gospel story today of the power of the Word of God. In this beautiful passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah, we're told, Thus says the Lord, I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. God's creative word. In the beginning was the Word, John tells us in his Gospel. And if we recall the story of creation, God speaks that Word. Let there be light, and there was light. The power of God's Word. And we see that power again in the Gospel story of Jesus. He heals by a Word. Power, the creative power of God's Word. New creation through God's Word. Those are the words we use in the sacrament of baptism. We say, you, are, you have become a new creation. For so, we are called a new creation, for so indeed you are. We are newly created, recreated through the sacrament of baptism. We are, in a lesser sense, also recreated, newly created through the sacrament of reconciliation, the forgiveness of sins by the power of Christ's self-offering on the cross for our sake. Our sins are forgiven. We are washed clean. What happened in the past is gone, a new creation. And this is what happens to the young boy. Jesus says to him, go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. We heard this Sunday in our second reading that we are saved by grace through faith. And this is the reality of our lives and our faith. God's gift always comes first. God is always first. But he says we are saved by grace, God's gift, through faith. Even our faith is first God's gift. That's why we as a church can baptize young infant children whom we might say subjectively are incapable of having an act of faith. Their parents profess faith on their behalf but they still receive the gift of faith in their baptism. God's grace is always first. Even the gift of faith comes from him, comes as a gift to us in the first instance. Now, the rest of our life, the rest of our journey of faith, for us as we mature and grow into our our, our, uh, human life and our life of faith, exercising the freedom that God has given us and the ability to make choices one way or the other in our life, in this situation and that, even with regard to our faith, that faith that we received as a gift, the rest of our life, we do need to focus on our part of the equation. We do need to focus on listening to God's word, allowing it to penetrate us and to transform us, to live a life, make choices and actions in our life that, that reflect the fruit of the gift that we have been given. We do bear significant responsibility for our own life of faith, for our relationship with the Lord, for that relationship to grow and deepen or that relationship to weaken. We do bear that responsibility. We are called to that responsibility. But it's good for us, even as we struggle, even as we strive to draw near to the Lord, to allow him to work his his grace within us. It's good for us to remember that that grace, that gift, is always there for us. He desires nothing more than to share it with us. The sacraments of the church are beautiful examples of that, waiting for us. The sacrament of reconciliation, always there. The sacrament of the Eucharist, celebrated as practically possible in every parish on every day throughout the world. God's grace. And that's just a pale sign, pale imitation of God's desire to pour his life, his love, his grace, his self into our lives. So we give thanks today for the gift of faith received as a grace. And we implore the Lord to continue to share that grace, that life with us, so that it might be strengthened, so that we might do our part to draw ever nearer to the Lord. So we might, as the prayers of the season of Lent tell us, worthily celebrate, celebrate the Paschal mysteries when we come to the joyful celebration of Easter Sunday.